Hello everyone, welcome back to the Minikube series. In this episode, I am going to talk about the local development, how to build a Go app, build an image, and then deploy it to Kubernetes in Minikube. And also, we're going to talk about sharing storage between your laptop and the Kubernetes cluster. Before we deploy anything to Kubernetes, we need a Docker image. So if you don't know about the Docker images, please take a look at the concept before this episode. But in short, it's a read-only file system that is built using an instruction called Dockerfile. And it could be used by any container runtime. In Minikube, once you have an image, there are eight different ways that you could push this image to the cluster. And we have a detailed uh, comparison table on how to use these different ways and when to use them and the advantages of each different method. You can check out in our website, and the links are going to be under the video. The most famous one is the Minikube Docker env. According to our benchmarking, this is the one of the best ways to build images. And you can see in this benchmark, the lower is the better, the blue is the Docker env, and the red is the Minikube image load. And also, we compare it with the other tools in the industry, such as Kind, K3D, and MicroKates. You can see a Minikube Docker env is significantly faster than any other way of building images, including Minikube's own ways and other tools. But the dramatic difference comes when it becomes iterative build. Once you have an image, you change something small in the code, you rebuild the image. In that case, Minikube is up to 60 times faster than the competitors or other similar tools. So Minikube's Docker env is a very clear way, solid way of using the local developments. And we're going to use it in this uh, tutorial as well. So let's get coding. Um, before we get coding, make sure you have Docker CLI installed. This is different than Docker Desktop. If you have Docker Desktop, Docker CLI is also installed. But Docker CLI is an open source tool. And you can download it for free. And you can check out our website how to install Docker CLI. Three important files in this uh, sample app that we're going to talk about today. This is a very simple Go app that uh, listens on port 8080 and displays a welcome message with the version of this app. And the version is defined at the top. And also, you have two handlers, one for index and one for headers. And the index ha handler, if you go to port 8080 slash, it will show you the hello world and the content of a file. And it will look for this file over here. So, Let's, uh, let's get started with building this image. If you want to build this image using Docker env, you have to run the minikube docker env command first. That will give you an instruction to run. So you have to run this command. You copy and paste this. Now your computer is pointing to the minikube's docker. So any image you build is going to be directly be built on minikube. So if I actually run docker images, you can see the images inside the docker cluster, uh, inside minikube cluster, sorry. So uh, let's build our image. I'm going to copy the command here. I'm going to call it docker build local devx. So right now, uh, this command is going to look at this Docker file to see how to install or so how to build this image. We say from a Golang Alpine, just basically copy all of the source code to this image and then install it and make sure the port 8080 is uh, exposed because that's what the port listening on, and that's the name of the binary to be called by default. Another important file here is the case manifest, or the case.yaml. This tells Kubernetes how to deploy this image. Now we just built our image. Actually, if you run Docker images, you could see that it was just built. It was, we called it local devx v1 built 29 seconds ago. So, in this case deployment, I'm telling Kubernetes to use this image, local devx v1. And I'm pointing the port 80 to be open and the RF dev. So you can look at this source code on our GitHub as well. The link is below. So let's go ahead and deploy this to Kubernetes. So kubectl apply deploy case.yaml. If you do kubectl get pod, you can see it just deployed that six seconds ago. We can ask Minikube to connect to this service that we just deployed. And you can see, there you go, hello world version one file content, which is empty. As you could see in our code, we try to open a file uh, on the pod slash temp data hello world. But that file does not exist on Minikube. And let's fix that. How do we do that? 
You're gonna do that in a minute. But before that, let's do a change here. I'm gonna change this to version two, and I'm gonna add a smiley to our hello world. So, to do that, we have to delete the image, build it again, delete the deployment, and redeploy it again. So, uh, we could either do all of this, like uh, delete the image here, build it again, uh, delete it and apply it. We could also combine all of those commands all together and do it at once. So it's gonna be the same. So I'm gonna copy all of that and do it again. And then now if I run Minikube service local devx, you can see it added a smiley face. You're happy. And the version was bumped. But the file content still is empty. So look, let's look at, look at the file content. This is the placed part of the code that reads the file contents. OS read file, temp data, hello world. This file is in Minikube pod. How do we mount it there? In our KCML, we have specified a volume uh, for, for our container. We say mount a volume in slash temp data. And that volume is mounted as a host path. Host path means directly on the Kubernetes host, or in this case, Kubernetes VM. So Minikube has a command called Minikube mount, and we could actually use that command to mount it there. So let's do that. So let's go here. And mind that, this command has to be run in a separate terminal, and you have to keep the terminal open. So here you could see Minikube mount. I'm mounting a folder in my desktop called local devx, and I'm mounting it into slash data, and you separate them with a the colon. So this is the source, and this is the target. And right now, if we redeployed our app, using this. So we first delete the image, build it again, delete the deployment, and apply it again. So we, or combine all of them in one with this here. Let's do that and see what happens. So we redeployed our app and run it again. Here, look at this. Content, hello from M1. This is a file on my laptop that is Minikube accessing as well. So let's take a look, look at the file together. Cat, desktop, local devx, hello world. You can see, hello from M1. Let's change that file ourselves. I'm gonna change it to M1. We add a smiley face here. So if I refresh here, you're gonna see the smiley face here as well. So this file is synced between Minikube and your laptop. So this is one way of doing uh, persistent volumes or persistent data in local development. So if you have a database and you want the database to be stored on your own laptop as opposed to inside a cluster that could be deleted, so you could do it this way. There are other ways of doing persistent volumes, and you could check out on our website, and the links are below. This was the end of this episode, and thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you stay for the next episode. Thank you.